Welcome back, it's Jess, and today I wanted to talk about the different ways that coding has changed my life. But before we get into that, I kind of want to get into my background, how I got here, and if you want to hear the full breakdown of how I got my first tech role, I'll leave it in the cards above and the description below. But jumping right in, my background, I always thought that I wanted to go into the medical field. I was the kid that anybody asked me what I wanted to do when I grow up, I was going to say a pediatrician. I wanted to be a pediatrician, and then as I got a little older and I got in high school, I had my braces and everything. I was going to my orthodontist appointments and they really like interest me. So I thought I wanted to be an orthodontist. So when I graduated from high school, I went to college for biology because I thought that I wanted to, like I said, go into some type of medical field. So right out of high school, I went to college to study biology because I thought I wanted to be an orthodontist. So that was the best path for me. But then I quickly realized that I didn't like school. I did not like college and that wasn't where I wanted to go. That wasn't the field that I wanted to go into at the time. And so fast forward, you know, I tried different colleges. Colleges. I went to different schools. I even studied psychology at one point um, because that kind of stuff still does interest me. And it's really crazy because I hear a lot of people that get into tech, specifically as software engineers or web developers, kind of started in that space. I've come across a few people who said that they started out in a psychology major. So I don't know what the correlation is between there. I know there has to be something, but there's definitely some type of connection. Um, but anyway, I thought I wanted to do that. And I think in 2012, 2011, 2011, I went to, I thought I wanted to go back into dentistry. So I was like, okay, let me just start with being a dental assistant. So I did complete dental assisting school. I got really good grades there. I had a 3.5 GPA. Um, so I guess technically, technically they considered that an associate's, but the college I went to, you can't even get in touch with these people. So I don't even know like how we even get that to prove it because it's not a college anymore. So red flag. Anyway, I went into that thinking that I wanted to do dentistry. And then when I did my internship, I was looking at stuff and I was like, oh yeah, no, I'm <laughs> I can't I can't deal with people's mouths. So I did not do that. And then I kind of floated for a little while. I was kind of lost a little bit. And then, um, like I said, I'm not going to go fully deeply into how I actually got into the web development space. Like I said, I have that video linked for you in this video. So after that, I was just working regular jobs. I was, well, my first job when I was 19 was at a call center and I was um, a telemarketer. So it was horrible, you know, getting cussed out all the time because we were doing outbound calls and getting on people's nerves. And then after that, I was like, I can't do this no more. So I went and got a job at Office Depot. And then I love that because I love stationery. I've told you guys that before. So just being in a place that sells office supplies just was amazing to me. And I got to work in the copy and print center. So I was always around paper, always making little booklets and stuff for people. It was super, super fun. And then I left there because I ended up getting a job at Best Buy because I love tech gadgets. And so I was like, okay, this is cool. So I worked at Best Buy for a few years and then I moved to a different city to be with my now husband and when I transferred to the Best Buy that was there it was horrible it was very horrible like to be completely transparent I dealt with racism <laughs> like there was it was just really bad so I and this is from like the people that I worked with not even the customers so um I left there <laughs> And I got into banking. So that's how I got into banking. And I did retail banking at first. And there is a difference between retail and credit union. So I did retail first, did that for about a year and a half. And then my cousin was like, she got a job in a credit union. And she was like, oh my gosh, I love it. You should think about switching over to this. So I ended up going to a credit union and I stayed in that for about three, three and a half years, something like that. And so, yeah, that's the background on my work history. I was learning how to code while I was on my lunch breaks. When I got home from work, I was just trying to figure it out as best I could. In the midst of all of those different jobs and going through life, you know, I had my first daughter, my second daughter even. I had both of them before I got my first tech role. And so I, you know, before I had them, my husband and I were staying in a place that was not the best. It definitely was like college vibes. Like it was on a street full of college kids. We actually had been enrolled in U University of Cincinnati at the time. So technically we were college kids. It was just a mess though. Like it was horrible. Our cars were getting vandalized. It was just not the best place. So once we found out that we were pregnant with our first daughter, we moved and it wasn't the best place looking back, but to us coming from where we were, it was a jump. It was definitely 
something that we were excited about and proud of. And so we moved to our second apartment together and we stayed there until my daughter was about six months. And then we decided to move back home to be closer to family. And also things were kind of getting a little hard. You know, we're new parents just trying to figure it out. So we moved back home. We moved into his grandmother's house and we stayed there for another six months, I think. I don't know. It was a little while. And then we eventually got our own place again here, which was, again, not the best situation. There were people shooting outside our window. I had to pull my babies off the bed one day to get them away from the window. Um, people were fighting in our building all the time. So you just never knew what was going to break out. It was just not the best thing. And then we ended up getting mice because the apartment was like by a field. It was by a big old field. We're from the Midwest. So lots of like land areas here. Um, but there were a lot of mice. And they started to come into our apartment and we would tell the landlords like, hey, and, the, you know, the managers, the property managers like, hey, we have mice coming in here. And literally, I kid you not, the lady looked at me when I told her she looked at me and said, well, it's getting cold outside. Like these mice were supposed to be our roommates because it was cold outside. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? Like, so we we're supposed to have mice with our children because it's cold outside. So anyway, they didn't do anything about it. So we said, OK, cool. We left. At this time, I did have my tech role, and I think my husband had just gotten his job as a software engineer. So I'm a web developer, and he's a software engineer at this point. And just from those jobs alone, we were able to get into our first luxury apartment. Safe, great view, nice living space for our kids, and just completely changed the trajectory of the way that we had our outlook on life, um, knowing that we could always do better and if we worked at it and that things were available to us with the right, you know, steps put in place and the right salaries and the right job titles, I guess. Um, so yeah, learning how to code took us from where we were with the mice to a luxury apartment that was safe and clean for our kids. So that's just the background and that's just the beginning. So with the background out of the way, that main thing that changed my life from learning how to code was actually changing our circumstances, being able to get into places that we wouldn't be able to get into as far as our living situation. Um, I don't think that, I don't even know what our trajectory would have been if we did not get into tech. Before my husband wanted to be and he wanted to go into medicine as well, but it was like, I think like physical therapy, like sports medicine, something like that. I honestly couldn't tell you. It was something to do with that, like surgical, I'm not sure, but it was something to do with that. And he was like, you know, he didn't end up doing that, obviously. And so our backgrounds, I wanted to give you that background because our backgrounds do not actually match where we are now. Um, they have nothing to do with tech, but here we are. And so some things that I have learned and that have been working in my life, even outside of, you know, talking about salary or anything like that, have been the fact that it's taught me patience. Learning how to code and getting into a new field takes time. It takes effort. It takes a lot of grit. It takes you not giving up, especially when you're going at a self-taught route and you're trying to do everything on your own and you really don't know where to go. I was doing this before the pandemic, and so there weren't as many boot camps or anything going on back then as there are now. There weren't as many resources. Nobody was really talking about it online, and so it was a lot harder for me to figure out where my path was and if I was even on the right path. But thankfully, I was able to get around people at meetups and ask questions and really dive deep into what it is that I needed to do to get to where I wanted to be. So getting back to it, it's taught me the patience because there have been a lot of times where, you know, I'm up working on websites, trying to figure out how to get them looking good and responsive. And I'm watching tutorials or going through my courses. At that time, I was taking Treehouse and then I started Free Code Camp. So just going through all of these curriculums and just really trying to get that knowledge under your belt while also building projects and networking and doing things like that with kids, it'll teach you a lot of patience and it'll teach you how to manage your frustrations. And I didn't realize that this was a thing until I started 100 Devs when I listened to Leon Noel and he speaks about that, learning how to manage your frustrations while you're learning how to code because you're going to get frustrated. It's not an easy thing. It's not, um, it's not an overnight thing. And so 
it definitely will teach you patience and it definitely will teach you how to fr manage your frustrations. Another thing learning how to code has taught me is that I can do hard things and I am smarter than I thought I was. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I did not do good in high school. I got bad grades in high school, barely passed high school, got a low GPA. It was like a two something. I don't even remember. I did really good in like English and social studies, but those that's because I like really, really love those type of subjects. I love those topics. I love to write and I love learning about history even to this day. But when it comes to math and science, you can forget about it. And so for me to even go into majoring into science, I don't even know what I was thinking. But I mean, science wasn't that bad to me. It was when I get, got to like chemistry and we started learning about all the elements and everything like that. I got kind of overwhelmed because I knew I was going to be tested on it all. And I'm the type of person I'm trying to get out of this. And I feel like I've gotten a lot better. But especially in high school, I'm the type of person that if I'm not getting something right away, I kind of get in these mindsets of I just can't do it. It's not meant for me to know I'm not smart enough. So now it's kind of like because I've taught myself a skill that was able to get me into better jobs, I know that I'm smarter than I thought I was. It just takes application. It takes learning how to learn, which is something that I'm also learning because, um, again, 100 Devs teaches you about that. There's a whole course on it. I can leave it below if you want more information on how to learn because, unfortunately, a lot of our school systems, especially one that I was in, I went to public school, they don't teach you how to learn. They expect you to just get this knowledge and go do your homework and then come back and take tests. They don't teach you how to study. They don't teach you how to do anything but the material that they're teaching you in the classroom. And then you have to go home and just kind of like know what to do with it. So I can do hard things and I know I can teach myself pretty much anything as long as it's not like, you know, trying to be a doctor or anything like that. But <laughs> I can pretty much learn anything that is available on the web. It just takes time. So that ties into the first point, which is patience. But as long as you have that patience, it's just like, yeah, I can do it. So that's another thing that I learned was that I can actually do hard things and that feels amazing. Another thing about learning how to code that I wanted to talk about is that it has pushed me out of my comfort zone. Even just outside of learning how to code, tech in general, just getting into this industry in general has pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Not just taking things that are easy and being like, I'm going to stay here because it's comfortable and it's easy. No, you have to push yourself with this stuff. And especially in today's times, you have to do the work. It's going to be hard. It's going to be long. I'm still working. I'm still going after things that I want for myself out of this industry. And it is hard. It is not easy, especially with the kids. But I am pushing myself out of my comfort zone to say, you can either stay comfortable and stay where it's easy and you can get to things easily or you can really bust your <laughs> ASS and do the hard things and do what you need to do because if not you're going to stay stagnant and then you're going to wonder what would happen if you never you know if you never get there you're going to wonder what would happen if you would have just tried the last thing i want to talk about is how learning how to code has pushed me outside of my comfort zone and let's just take learning how to code out of this just being in tech in general has pushed me outside of my comfort zone in so many ways for one like i said before knowing that i am able and i am smart enough to do something has been outside of my comfort zone because i'm so used to going in my shell being like okay this didn't come easy to me so i must not be mentally to do it or I must not be someone who is smart enough to do it but doing this has pushed me outside of that because it literally takes hard work but once you do the hard work you see the benefits of what it can bring you see the benefits of how it can help you and how it can change your life and how you can do so many things with just this one skill and so that is definitely a way that it changed my life but it's also Push me outside of my comfort zone in the sense of reaching out to other people. You guys may not believe this because I show up here on camera, I'm talking, I'm comfortable in front of the camera, I love to do this, but I am an introvert. I like to call myself an introvert extrovert, but I lean more towards introvert. And I say that because I am a person who I can talk to people. I love talking to people. I can get out there. I can communicate. I can spark conversations. I don't have to have somebody. I don't need to wait on somebody to like approach me to spark a conversation, but I do get very drained by too much communication and too much, you know, you know, socializing and things like that. And it does take me a lot to just actually get my foot outside of the door to get out of the house to go do things. And I would prefer to be at home 
with my family, watching a movie, playing my video games, doing something like that than to be out partying. I've always been like that. Like even growing up, my cousins would be like, you don't want to go to this party or you want to come over here, you want to go over there. And I'm like, not really. I just want to stay in my room and play my PlayStation and read my books. That's all I want to do. <laughs> and so even to this day, my cousins make fun of me and they're like, well, I don't even know why you're going to ask Jessica because she's probably not going to come. So it's okay. I'm cool with that. But <laughs> it has been a situation that has made me go outside of that because I have to network. That's how I got my first web developer role. That's how I got my start and my foot in the door into the tech industry. And so getting out there and talking to people and explaining to them what I want to do and just sharing my thoughts and sharing my projects and sharing my ideas and asking questions is what got me here. And I encourage you guys that if you are not somebody who likes to talk to other people, you're going to have to push yourself out of your comfort zone, especially in today's climate and like the way that the industry is going to talk to people. Don't reach out to people and be like, hey, can I get a job? Or like, hey, like, you know, just don't make it sound when you reach out to people and you're doing these coffee chats, don't make it about like getting a job. You got to build those relationships and you have to be genuine about it. I have gotten real friendships out of networking and talking to people through coffee chats. And I'm so blessed and grateful for that. And so push yourself outside of your comfort zone and get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's kind of what you had to do. <laughs> Another thing along the lines of this is knowing my worth and knowing that I'm worthy of more and knowing that I'm capable of more because before I was willing to settle. I was in a you know situation in a in a job that I could only go so high. I could only go into certain parts of that job. First of all, there weren't even a lot of different options when it comes to the company that I was with in banking where I could have really like excelled and like gotten into something like, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I, I could only go up so high and my salary could only reach a certain point. And so knowing that I want it better and I could do better is something that is amazing. And I really encourage you that if you want to do this to just keep going, if you want to learn how to code, do it. <laughs> it is not too late to learn how to code. Get that skill under your belt. See what you can do. You can create your own business. You can do things that are not in big tech. There are so many different things. You could be in your community building websites for other people who need them. Just keep going and see where it takes you. Those were just some of the ways that coding has changed my life. And I'm super excited to see what else is going to happen, how I can really get into the things that I'm learning right now, really get into the things that I'm trying to get into and just see where this is going to take me. I'm very excited. It's scary because it's kind of new, but you know, there's so many new things going on in the tech industry in general right now, but I do feel like it is still worth it and I'm super excited about it. So, so let me know in the comments below, are you in tech? How has it changed your life? What are you looking to get out of it? If you're not in tech, how, what are you wanting to do in this tech industry? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. You know that. And I'll see you in the next one.